been brought to my attention that I never introduced myself. <laughs> I thought most of you guys knew me. But uh, so my name is Sarge Salman. And if you look in the program, I have a little blurb written in the beginning. But this is really, I guess, I'm just a volunteer. And the way TEDx goes, it just you kind of step into it and it swallows you. Uh, my first exposure to TEDx was two Octobers ago at TEDx from Atlantic. And, it, and this is a, what I believe to be the premier TEDx conference in the world. First two-day TEDx conference, Case Foundation, the partner, Nat Geo, PBS, I mean, world-class stuff. And this is, it's the, it's the child of Dave Troy and Nate Mook, and I have the chance to kind of work with them and really get a sense like, oh my God, what is, what is the potential of this? You know, when volunteers come together, when there's no money at stake, and, and, and it just, it's, it's, the motives are pure, it's awesome. And so you keep showing up, and that's what happens. You keep showing up, showing up, showing up, and then that's the secret to all volunteer work, right, is you just keep showing up. Uh, and then it's just, and that's how it goes. And so this is the second one I do here in Baltimore. Um, Last year, we sold 198 tickets. Since this morning, someone bought two more, so we're up at 800. Uh, and I'm just baffled. Uh, and I'm grateful. Uh, so, yeah, and I mean, fundamentally, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan. I mean, I'm a, I'm a chemist. So in chemistry, one of the things you learn is called collision theory. Bonds between atoms form a collisions. Either they bounce, nothing happens, or they stick, form a bond. But collisions require proximity. If the atoms are so far apart and never see each other, you guarantee that nothing ever happens. You bring them together for a chance of something happening. And so this is what, to me, this is. This is a big experiment in proximity, bringing people together for a chance of something happening. Uh, and one of the things we hope is, you know, like I said, on the back of the badge, you can write your, you know, hopefully you can write other people's contact information to stay in touch. But the other thing that we did is if you open, you open, you know, the page to any speaker page, you notice there's an email address under each one. It'll be something at tedxmail.com. And this is something we started up this year, it just seems so easy. Basically, I, I bought the TEDx mail domain and it's a forwarding address. So it's a way, if you'd like to contact any of the speakers, drop them an email there and they'll follow up with you. And, and this is just a simple way if you didn't get a chance to connect with them earlier today. And, and all of them are very excited to be part of this. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's how it goes. I've been told there's another phone that's been found. It's, somewhere, it's up uh, by, on the registration desk. Let's see what else. No, I think that covers it. Did I cover everything? So I, everyone's clear on who I am? Are we cool? Great, thank you very much. Uh, and so on, on, the issue of, on the issue of building community, so some of the things, you know, we have, I, I have this, started this tradition of, because you have so many seats, of inviting TEDx organizers for free. And we have 22 TEDx events locally represented. Where are the TEDx organizers? Can you please stand? Yeah. So these are basically our, my colleagues, our friends, and, and you know, I just send the invite, say, please show up, we'd love to meet you, and maybe brag a little bit about what we do here in Baltimore. Um, but, uh, and so there's another special group of people that came up. I received a, a rather lengthy email from a lady named Sahar. Sahar, are you here? Sahar is a teacher, and you know, she made a very compelling case to, to bring, what, what, 20 of her students, who most have never been to TEDx, and of course, so they're here. Uh, we have several meetups that are here and, and several organizations. You saw the, the school, uh, the school kids, the, is it, it was a Catholic school, I forgot the name of it, Saint something. They bought 10 tickets. I look at them, same email, email address. So this is, very, this is very heartening, in fact, that you know, what we're trying to do is resonating with a lot of different people. And so right now, I'd like to show you a video. I remember first about talk, talk, two projects earlier, Castle. This one's called Project Calliope. I'm going to show you a video first. I'm going to go back and talk about it. Thank you.
a lot of good projects start with crazy ideas. Certainly Castle is a crazy idea, and so is this one. Uh, and got together a bunch of friends. I'd like to bring them out. So they come out, tell you the story. Just thought, what if we were to combine two technologies, videography and GPS? And the idea is, what if we can use that GPS location of a camera to relay on the image information about that particular location? And so the May 19th, 1870 parade was a historic parade. And so what you saw written there matched the location of the camera as it was moving. Now, this is just simply a proof of concept. But I'm here to bring them out to let, so they can introduce themselves and tell you where we're going to take this. Hi, my name is Elliot Pearson. Um, I'm a software engineer. I work at uh, advertising.com, part of AOL Networks. Uh, we are looking to take the idea of video and embedding uh, a geolocation signal. Uh, nowadays, everyone is a beacon. Everyone is sending out signals. You have them on your phone. So what we want to do is be able to utilize that and build a platform that makes it very, very easy for someone to tell a story without having a lot of technical like, experience. So that's really the, the purpose of this project. A lot of the technology already exists. It's just so fragmented. So what we want to do is bring it together package it up, and make it so that anyone can use it. Thank you. I'm Ellen Worthing, and uh, my interest is data. I work for a mapping company. And um, to build on what Elliot just said, uh, I live in both the past and the future. And um, when you saw that video, you saw a lot of information that came up. I got that uh, from newspaper archives. And what I would like to do is marry um, the data from the past that we find on the internet and in uh, newspaper archives and, and other locations. And how can we put it in a format to marry some of this futuristic stuff like GPS and video and anything else that might come along so that it can be uh, more user friendly for people like you? Carol? Hi, I'm Carol Bandura. Um, I just. Uh, put everything together for the video. Um, for me, I think this project has so much potential. Um, it can go in so many different directions. I just think of um, taking your phone and just pulling up an app that you can take a look. You're in a new place and you can see, oh, here's this building and here's the information about it. And maybe it's social too. Um, John and, and Kim got uh, proposed to, or they got engaged on this bridge over here in this um, park, who knows. Uh, there's so much potential and there's so much opportunity for education and, and social networking and um, history, the future, the present, the now. But this is not just it. So Calliope, the name is, is, is very telling. I'm a birder. Calliope is the smallest hummingbird in North America. They hover, right? And of course, Calliope is also the Greek goddess of epic poetry. This project is going well, let me tell you what's going to happen in September 2015. In 2015, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, is going to lift restrictions on the commercial use of drones. I want to put this on a drone. Actually, we are going to put this on a drone. Next year's TEDx Baltimore, drones, drones, drones. <laughs> and furthermore, I'm here to announce that we're starting a drone incubator in collaboration with the Emergency Technology Centers, the ETC. There is no reason, with all the resources available in this area, that Baltimore cannot become the cutting edge area for developing drone technologies, drone jobs, and drone education. So Project Calliope is being rolled out as a drone to develop that latest civilian use drone technology. So I hope you can support us with that as well. And I'm very glad that the ETC is supporting us in, in this effort. Thank you. Thank you.